Hi, and welcome to this Willie Answers. I got a great question from Antonio in the forum, uh, and he was asking about uh, Charles Mingus' Goodbye Pork Pie Hat. A uh, beautiful uh, ballad, uh, and he was asking, uh, the final turnaround is a B7 chord, uh, leading to the first chord, which is an F7 chord. So let's pull up the music for that. So this is what we got here. We got this, um, we got this, uh, B7 chord here, which then leads to our F7 chord. Let me just play this last part for you. So we have this, uh, I'm just going to do some simple voicings for you. All right, and then we go to D flat 7, and then the G flat's major 7. Okay, so now, um, uh, and then actually let me play that last voicing a little bit easier for you, because I know a lot of times when I'm playing tenths, if students can't hit those tenths, they get a little uh, upset about that. So, all right, so we have F7 here, and the question is, why does that B7 work so well going to the F7? And what I want to do, first of all, is I'll answer that in one second, but I instead want you to go back a couple of measures here. We're going to go and take a look at these three measures. So when I'm analyzing something, I'm looking at where I'm going to, but then I back up and I try and figure out, um, using my ear, but then also using theory knowledge, try to figure out, well, what makes sense? And in looking at this tune, typically what would be a chord that would lead to an F7? My dominant motion. So I always start there. So if I had an F7 chord and then just went to a C7 chord right in here, how would that sound then finally going to the F7 over there? So if I go F7 to the D flat 7 and then C, Do you hear how that C7 works so well, that dominant motion leading back to the F? Well, guess what? That D flat 7, that kind of like also strengthens the case for the C7. Why? Because D flat 7 is a sub 5 that then leads me down to the C7. So that half step resolution moving down to the C7, which then resolves uh, up a fourth, down a fifth to the F7. Okay? So, now you can see I'm um, kind of destructing the, uh, the, um, uh, the chords a little bit. I'm uh, uh, tr changing them to try and find some harmony stuff that, that is a little bit easier and makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so now I have F7 to D flat 7 to C7, all right? And then that works well for uh, going to the F. Now, what is the tritone of C? Ah, kind of interesting. G flat, isn't it? And a lot of times we would do a G flat 7 chord, right? So, something like that. G flat 7, throwing in the, the sharp 11. So now I could try that F7 to D flat. And let me go to G flat 7 there and see how that sounds. Sounds all right, except for when we get to, uh, to the... Sorry, uh, that F natural, the F natural there doesn't sound so great um, uh, when you're playing that um, uh, G flat 7 chord, right? Kind of rubs, okay? So we could change that to a G flat major 7, right? So now all we're doing is we're changing the quality of the chord from a dominant chord to a major chord. So now we have... Now, could we go from that G flat over here into the F and kind of get in there a little bit earlier? Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, we could do that as well because remember a lot of times that half step then resolves down. But now this is where it gets interesting. He doesn't go down a half step to F. Instead, now we, get, we finally get to this B7 chord. What's going on there? Well, always look for the tritone. So go to B and then figure out, well, what is the tritone away from B? It's what? It's F, isn't it? So B7 is a substitution for F7. Okay? B7 is a substitution for F7. So remember how I said, oh, we could try going to an F7 there. Now what happens if we go G flat 7 right here to F7 again? So we have... And then G flat 7, uh, let me get a voice in that's going to work for you here. Right? So that does work there, okay? But it sounds a little bit boring going to F7 
and then hitting F7 again, right? So you can think about the tritone substitution. So rather than playing F7, you play B7. You can think about it as an alteration to the chord. So rather than hitting the same chord again, you go to its tritone. It still kind of functions and works the same way, right? But it gives you an alternate sound. Now this is where it gets really cool. So you can do F7 to D flat seven. Let's go to our G flat major seven. And then let's just play a F7 chord right here. Right, so I'm gonna play that, that plain old F7, the third, the fifth, the flatted seventh and the root. Right, and I hit F again. I'm not gonna change the right hand. Check out what I do with the left hand. So I have. And so you see how I can go to that B, and this is what will happen a lot of times with bass players. They'll hit that tritone while you're still hitting an F7 chord. They'll go to that B instead, and they create a whole different sound. Hmm. Now, Charles Mingus, what did he play? Played bass. So can you hear how like all this starts to tie together? Bass player constantly going to those tritones to get an alternate sound. So now as a bass player, he was probably thinking, let me get this alternate sound. Of course, I don't know what he was thinking, but this is kind of like, uh, this is how I'm approaching it. All right, so now rather than playing that voicing, we obviously try and find a better voicing and something like that would work a lot better. So now we have. And now we're back to F7. Okay. So I look at this B7 chord as um, just a tritone of the F. It's just a substitute chord. When you're playing that, you could do that B altered scale. Okay. Um, and if you take a look at that B altered scale and you kind of move it around so that F is the bottom note, well, what do you notice that you have here? It's basically an F mixolydian scale with a sharp 11, right? So this is what we call an F Lydian flat seven scale, Lydian flat seven. Okay. So again, Lydian flat seven scales work well on dominant chords. See how all of this starts to, as you start to understand more and more of this, it all starts to like, oh, okay, yeah, I could see it from here, I could see it from here, I can see it from here. All right, this is a pretty challenging tune to, uh, to analyze. So um, uh, if you don't fully get this, you know, th you know, don't worry. You can watch this video again and, and try and pick up some more of this. And of course, this is my take on this. Everybody's going to have their own take because sometimes with songs like this, you, you use your ear. Like what's interesting is this G flat major seven there. That's an interesting choice. I wouldn't have made that choice as a composer, but he made that choice. And I'll be honest with you, that's a beautiful sound, isn't it? Now, uh, this G flat going up a half step and playing a major seven chord is another common technique, but it's kind of interesting moving down to the dominant. A lot of times when you go up to that major, uh, up a half step, you then come down a half step to major as well. Right, so it's kind of interesting to go up to major and then come down to dominant. So all interesting uh, things that you'll find as you analyze more and more songs. So anyway, uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Willie Answers. Post in our student forum at forums.jazzedge.com and get your piano and music questions answered. Thanks for watching.